today my topic is Tennessee Williams drama a street car named desire we already discussed seven scenes of this play today scene 8 the scene is laid in stanley's apartment the view through the big windows is fading gradually into a still golden dusk the three people that is stanley stella and blanche are completing a gloomy birthday supper and stanley looks sullen and stella is embraced and sad and blanche has a tight artificial smile on her drawn face and there is a fourth place intended for much left vacant all of a sudden blanche requests stanley to tell them a joke or a funny story to make them all laugh she does not know why all of them are so very gloomy she wants to know if it is because she has been disappointed by her gentleman admirer much by not turning on for her birthday supper as promised stella who knows the truth behind the absence of much love feebly stanley tells blanche that he does not know stories refined enough to suit her superior taste of course he is ironically pulling the legs of blanche blanche then offers to tell one herself she begins narrating the story of the old maid and her parrot she uses the occasion to offend her brother in law by comparing him with the parrot who knew more vulgar expressions than mr kawaski when she finishes a story she throws her head and laughs stella also makes a weak effort to seem amused but stanley pays no attention to the story and keeps himself busy with the supper blanche ditches stanley saying that he was not apparently amused by the story meaning thereby that he lacks a sense of humor stella joins with blanche in criticizing her husband this irritated stanley stella asks him to go and wash his face and fingers which are awfully greasy and then help her clear the dining table he becomes terribly angry at the comments and orders of his wife and he throws a cup a plate and a saucer on the floor and says that is how he will clear the table he wants stella not to talk hereafter that way to him he is picked by the superior as amu assumed by stella and blanche in calling him pig polack disgusting vulgar greasy and so on let the sisters not think of themselves to be a pair of queens to go and order about him let them remember what hugh long said every man is a king so he is the king of his house and let them not forget it the sudden unusual behavior of stanley throws stella into tears blanche then asks her sister what really happened while she was bathing what exactly did stanley tell stella she thinks that he had told something about much and herself she feels that stella is really aware of the reason for much absence in the party she wants to phone much herself and find the truth from himself Stella goes to her husband and accuses him for the harm he has done to Blanche by ruining her chances of marrying Mitch. She says that she could not stand the sight of Blanche's disappointment caused by Mitch's absence. But Stanley takes Stella in his arms and says that everything will be all right after Blanche leaves them. She will have our baby and they will revert to their happy days in the past and they will make love freely 
without the fear of anybody's sister behind the curtains intruding upon their privacy and blanche is returns from the telephone without having been able to contact mitch she tells stella that mitch's absence from her birthday supper was an insult to her stanley complains about the hot steam coming from the bathroom after blanche's bath blanche tells him that she takes hot baths to soothe her nerves and this kind of treatment is known as hydrotherapy stanley then hands over an envelope to blanche saying that it is his birthday gift to her when she opens the envelope she finds a bus ticket to laurel on tuesday stanley explains to her that it is a ticket back to laurel on the greyhound for tuesday blanche understands the practical joke played on her by stanley and tries to smile suppressing her despair stella takes a exception to the root treatment meted out by her husband to blanche she says that need not have been so very cruel to someone whose condition would melt even a stony heart he did not know how delicate blanche is nobody was as tender and trusting as she was as, as a girl but people like stanley cruel to the core abused her and forced her to change that is into a loose woman then stanley reminds stella of their past romantic days and how she had changed her opinion of him as common everything will be all right soon in fact everything was all right before her sister had shown in there how could stella hope him to put up with her sister who had called him an ape stanley suddenly notices the change in stella she is having labor pains and ask him to take her to the hospital so this scene bristles with irony as blanche is still unaware of stanley's villainy in stopping mitch from attending her birthday besides ruining all her chances of further happiness it also highlights the boorish behavior of stanley in contrast to the gentle and tender conduct of stella who feels terribly for the wickedness for her of her husband against her sister which she has no power to prevent it once again stresses upon the clashes of cultures and the atmosphere of violence that perverts the play scene 9 blanche is seated in a tense mood she is wearing her scarlet satin robe a bottle of liquor and a glass are kept on the table beside the chair the rabbit feverish polka tune the varsovania is heard in fact the music is in her mind flashing back on her memory the suicide of her husband near the moon lake casino she is drinking in order to avoid it and the sense of disaster closing in on her mitch comes around the corner in his work clothes and he is found unshaven he climbs the steps and rings the bell and blanche is startled learning that the visitor is mitch she hides a bottle of liquor in a closet and quickly touches up her face with powder she is so much excited that her breath is audible as the dashes about to the kitchen door and lets him in she tells mitch that she cannot forgive him for his absence from her birthday party and thus deliberately insulting him his conduct is utterly ungentlemanly she is ready to forgive him for his cold conduct and his angry face is ugly workman dress and an unshaven face she forgives him because it is a great relief to see him blanche notices that something is wrong with mitch and so she inquires if his mother is well suddenly she feels that polka tune on her head and says 
that music again when he ask her to explain she tells him that it is a varsoviana they were playing when alan suddenly left the dance to floor and shot himself dead she also hears a distant revolver shot then she feels relieved much question sir mental soundness after mentioning about the polka music troubling her my now and then she then notices something strange in his eyes and ask him to open his mind much complains that it is dark in the room blanche tells him that she prefers to have it dark for dark is comforting to her much then tells her that she has not let him see her in the light she has never wanted to go out till after 6 that is after sunset and then the place that has been chosen is one that is not lighted much blanche accuses much of having some hidden motive in talking thus he tells her that she has never had a good look at her then he suddenly tears the paper tears the paper lantern of the light bulb and blanche utters a frightened gasp how he tells her that he did not did so to take a look at her good and plain he does not mean to insult her but wants to be just realistic blanche tells him that she does not want realism but magic in her life much then tells blanche that he does not mind her being older than he what pains him most is her pretensions and cheeky lies about her modesty he is so to learn that she has led the life of prostitute when blanche denies his accusation he tells her that he has verified everything about her stained past in laurel from a merchant friend of his by name kaifber and she then pours herself drink and then begins to divulge the disreputable past of her life in order to forget the death of her young husband she mixed up freely with strangers to fill her empty heart she had an affair with a 17 year old boy of her school and the superintendent gaining knowledge of this dismissed her from the school as she could go nowhere she came to her sister's house suddenly realizing that her youth is gone she thought she could have the support of much has he himself needed one but her hopes were shattered by the gossip mills fed by people like kaifber stanley and shaw so here blanche confessed everything to much much accuses blanche of having lied to him and fooled him blanche tells him that she has never lied in her heart just then she hears the sound of blind mexican women selling flowers for funerals this reminds her of her living in close quarters with death in belri her ancestral homestead she tells much how she had affair with young soldiers under training in a nearby camp on saturdays suddenly much tells her that he wants to embrace her which he has been missing all summer in that case blanche tells him that he should marry her but much tells her that marrying her is ruled out for she is not clean enough to be taken into his house with his mother blanche asks him to clear the place then as he still remains staring at her she cries wildly fire 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 with a startled gasp much rushed out from the, the place blanche is staggering back from the windows falls to to her knees the distant notes of the blue piano are heard in a low pitch so this scene blanche's pretensions are exposed by much and he reveals that the aim is only to possess blanche sexually and he openly declares that blanche is impure to become his wife 
and live in the same house with his mother all the hopes of blanchi for a secure and peaceful life is scattered and blanchi is caught in the web of her own lies and a stained past now scene 10 blanchi has been drinking steadily since much left she has drawn a wardrobe trunk into the center of the bedroom it flunks open with flowery dresses thrown across it as the drinking and packing went on a mood of mad joy came into her and she has dressed herself out in a somewhat soiled and crumpled white satin evening gown and a pair of scuffed silver slippers with brilliants set in their heels she is now placing the rhinestone crown on her head sitting before the mirror of the dressing table and murmuring excitedly to a group of elusive admirers blanche indulges in a fancy of talking a moonlight swim at the old rock quarry dismissing her fancy she looks at her hand mirror for a closer inspection of her looks Suddenly as if in a fit she slams the mirror face down with such a terrible violence that the glass cracks She moans a little down Just then Stanley returns from the hospital As he looks at Blanche he gives a low whistle He has had a drinks on the way Blanche enquires after the health of her sister and the baby to be delivered. Stanley replies that Stella is all right and the baby is expected only in the morning. Blanche then tells Stanley that it means that they too will be alone there. And Blanche's observation makes Stanley reply humorously that it will be so unless she has got someone hidden under the bed. On seeing her imposing dress, Stanley asks her for the reason. Blanche tells him that she has received a telegram from an old admirer of hers, Shep and Leek, an oil milliner, inviting her for a cruise of the Caribbean Sea on a yacht. Stanley makes fun of Blanche's fantasy, but not seeing through his ridicule, she elaborates more on her admirer, who has come right at a time. when she has felt that luck has been failing her and stanley tells her that they can forget their differences over a cup of beer blanche politely turns down the offer at this stanley points out to blanche that it is a red letter night for both of them this is because blanche is getting her oil millionaire lover and he for his part is getting a baby and so it is a fit occasion for celebration and blanche tells stanley that the anticipation of the thought of her leaving her sister's house and enjoying privacy in the company of ship makes her feel quite happy stanley mockingly asks her if her admirer ship will interfere with her privacy in any manner Blanche tells Stanley that her admirer cares only for her company and not for sexual gratification as implied by Stanley. She being a cultivated woman of intelligence and upbringing can enrich a man's life with her beauty of mind and richness of spirit and tenderness of the heart. She asks that she considers not only stanley as fine but also as friends mitch mitch came to see her that night he dared to come to her in his work clothes when he began to bawl out out the slanderous stories about her let loose by his mentor stanley she had ordered him to clear out but he returned with a box of roses to beg her forgiveness she told him that she could not forgive deliberate cruelty but stanley asked her if much met her before or after a telegram from her milliner admirer she becomes confused at this question she then tells stanley 
that there was no telegram at all. Stanley then punctures her other lies regarding ship and leak and Mitch coming back with Rose. In fact, he says he knows where Mitch is at that moment. Though she has been feeding him and others with lies, she could not deceive him through her game. He then mocks at her for behaving like the Queen of Egypt and sprinkling the place with powder and perfume and covering the light bulb with the paper lantern. Blanche tries frantically to summon help from her admirer, Shep and Click in the Western Union. She wants help from Shep very urgently as she is in a trap. But as she does not have the correct address of Shep, she is not able to contact him. So taking this as an advantage, Stanley takes a very cruel and wicked revenge on Blanche for having called a man animal. He shows his brutal behavior towards Blanche. She tries to defend herself but she is helpless. At last Stanley seduced Blanche. The hot trumpet and drums from the nearby bar the four deuces sound loudly. So this scene also throws light on the worsening mental condition of Blanche leading to utter madness on account of Stanley's sexual outrage on her. Blanche embraces emerges as a tragic figure in this scene. The clash between Stanley and Blanche is uneven. It is a clash between two cultures in which brute force trump triumphs. In the world of Stanley's, moth like ba Blanche's have no place. Scene 11. So this is the last scene of this play. This scene is laid in Stanley's apartment. Some weeks later, Stella is pa packing Blanche's things. The sound of water can be heard running in the bathroom. It is obvious that Blanche is taking a bath. The door Curtains of the kitchen are partly open on the poker players. The poker players are Stanley, Steve, Mitch and Pablo who sit around the table in the kitchen. Stella has been crying as she arranges the flowery dresses in the open trunk of Blanche. Eunice comes down from her flat upstairs and enters the kitchen. There is another burst of shouting from the poker table. In the poker that is being played by Stanley and his friends, Stanley is in a winning spree. It makes Pablo cursing Stanley's good luck. Stanley then lectures on luck. He says that luck is believing you are lucky. And Stanley asks what has gone wrong with Mitch. Eunice who walks past the poker players comments that she always felt that men are a callous lot with no feelings. Namely, Stanley's violation of Blanche's modesty and his decision to send her to an asylum. Eunice comes down to meet Stella and the later asks her about her baby and the farmer says that it is sleeping quietly like a little angel. Then Eunice asks Stella about Blanche and Stella informs Eunice that she is taking bath. Stella tells Eunice that Blanche has not eaten anything but a drink. When Eunice confidently inquires of Stella if she has told everything to Blanche, that is about the decision to confine her to lunatic asylum. Stella informs Eunice that she has simply told Blanche that they had made arrangements for her to take rest in the country but she has got it mixed up in her mind with the ship and leak. While Eunice and Stella are talking, Blanche opens the bathroom door and gives instruction to her sister about the items of dress that have to be got ready for her where during her proposed journey. 
poor blanche in her deranged mental condition is totally in the dark as to what stanley has planned for her stella feels guilty if she did not right thing by accepting her husband's direction to pack blanche off to an ausilium but then she explains to unice that she had no other go for she could not believe blanche's story that is stanley having raped her while stella was away at hospital delivering her baby and go on living with stanley at the same time and unice advises her against believing blanche's story for she cannot risk her life and security blanche's horrible experience capped by stanley's cruel violation of her modesty slowly uninjures her mind which is feeding more and more on illusions she asks her sister stella to inform her if a call from ship and lee comes to her as she comes out of the bathroom she asks her sister if she coast is clear for her and stella assures her it is so stella and unice makes up an effort to cheer up and low spirits of blanche by complimenting on her looks and her hair and so on this obviously boost the moral of blanche who looks upon unice and stella as her two handmaids and herself a royal personage on a long voyage with her admirer ship and click so she again enquires stella if she had a call for her from him the sound of blanche's voice makes much weak and he drops cord he has on his hand at this stanley slaps him on his shoulder the voice of stanley directing mitch to steady himself shocks blanche for a moment then in a rising voice she asks stella what has happened there and she wants an explanation of it stella afraid of stanley's violent temper at being disturbed in his game and quitens as his quitens as sister on seeing the gloomy face of stella she asks her if anything is wrong with herself she wants to know the reason for stella's sad and mournful starting at her staring at her unice tells blanche that there is nothing wrong with her and in fact she looks wonderful she tells blanche that she has heard that the other is going on a trip stella confirms unice supposition saying that her sister is going on a long vacation on hearing this blanche asks them to help her get dressed blanche notices the bunch of grapes which unice has brought and asks if they have been washed unice tells her that the grapes are from the french market blanche tells unice that does not mean that the grapes have been washed just then she hears the church bells at this blanche tells that they are the only clean things in elysian fields then she says that she is ready to go stella asks her to wait a bit then blanche says that she is going to spend the rest of her time on the sea and it is where she is going to die she says that she will die only of an unwashed grapes one day out on the sea she will die with her hand in hand with some nice looking ship's doctor a very young man with a blonde mustache and a poor silver watch she will then be dropped in the ocean which is as blue as the eyes of her first lover Alan Gray In the meantime a doctor and a nurse arrive from a mental asylum to take Blanche away to the institution as requested by Stanley The poker game is interrupted and Eunice goes out to meet the visitors without letting Blanche suspect the identity of the visitors and the purpose of their visit She announces that someone is calling for Blanche 
Blanche gets up to meet the visitor but finding it was not her lover Shep and Lake. She wheels back to the bedroom and seizes the back of a chair and stands there as if to defend herself. Stanley now requests the doctor to go in and fetch the patient. But the doctor sends in the matron that is nurse to fetch Blanche out. The matron now asks Blanche to come out with her. Blanche tells her that she does not know who the lady is and she wants to be left alone to herself. Blanche says that she has left something behind. Stanley mocks at her saying that she has left nothing but used up talcum tins and empty perfume bottles. Probably she wants her paper lantern. He goes to the dressing table and tears off the paper lantern and extends it to Blanche. Blanche cries as if she has herself been torn to pieces. Then the matron boldly advances towards her. Stella then rushes to Eunice, unable to stand the sight of Blanche's sufferings. She feels sorry for having conceded to Stanley's suggestion to commit Blanche to an asylum. Much is also terribly moved by the agony of Blanche. He becomes wild with rage and shouts at Stanley for having debased Blanche to such a level. Steve catches hold of Mitch who collapses at the table sobbing. As Blanche insults the effort of the matron in getting her conducted out, the doctor intervenes and takes Blanche gently in his hand and Blanche walks out with him saying, Whoever you are, I have depended on the kindness of strangers. The poker players stand back as Blanche and the doctor cross the kitchen door. As the doctor and Blanche goes out on the porch, Stella cries out her sister's name from the steps of the staircase leading to Eunice's apartment upstairs. As she begins to sob uncontrollably, Eunice places Stella's baby in her arms. Stanley consoles Stella and Stella responds to his caress and feels somewhat revived. The sound of the blue piano and the trumpet drowns her sobs and the sensual murmur of Stanley. At the poker table, Steve says, This game is seven cards dead. So overall in this scene, people like Mitch and Stella who feel for Blanche are rendered powerless by the brute force of Stanley. They have to become mere spectators to the sufferings of Blanche. So the story is end with tragedy. Thank you.